Now, the older I get, the more thankful I am for a lot of the funny times that I've had in my life growing up. And I have plenty of years left of embarrassing my kids and my wife. But there's a few moments that really stick out to me. Like that one time, my cousin went up to a Home Depot worker, asked him where the fitting rooms were while holding a pair of overalls. What about delivering the greatest best man speech ever? While starting it off with the word fornication. Yes, I have done that. How about the time that my son hit me in the junk? Boy, did that ball fly off the tee. I didn't think it was funny, but everybody else was laughing, so I guess it probably was a little bit. And then you have my brother. There was a guy in high school he didn't really care too much for, so he took his toothbrush, stuck it between his butt cheeks, and texted him a picture of it a week later. The reaction was priceless. Gotta love those funny moments, and it's impossible to rank which ones are the best. However, one thing that we can rank are the top 25 running backs for 2020 fantasy football. What is going on, Headliner Nation? Jake, Fantasy Headliners. Hopefully everybody's doing well out there. We're today, we're talking about some running back rankings. Now, these are not consensus rankings. This is not based off of ADP or other people's information. These are my personal top 25 running backs for 2020 fantasy football. Now, I did a video a few weeks ago now on some running backs that I will not draft. Ones that I'm avoiding here in 2020. And I said a little bit of a challenge out there. I said if we could break last year's like record, I'd give away an autographed jersey. Well, we're getting close to that. However, I want to give away some draft guides. You just saw the promo video before this video started, and they're really flying off the virtual shelves right now. But I want to give two of them away. If this video can get more than 1,000 likes, I will pick two random people down below in the comment section to give away a free 2020 fantasy football draft guide. So if you're interested, hit the like button, leave a comment down below, and let's get into our top 25 running back rankings for 2020 fantasy football. So we're going to kick it off right here, number one. And why are we starting at number one? Why are we not building anticipation to the top guy? Because everybody knows who the top guy really is. As of right now, for most people, Christian McCaffrey is still the number one overall running back for 2020 fantasy football. However, do not be surprised if Saquon Barkley overtakes him here this year. Now, a lot of people aren't sold on the fact that Teddy Bridgewater can get the ball down the field deep. Well, that's fine. That's going to work out for Christian McCaffrey and a lot of dump-off passes underneath. However, they're not really going to be in a division where they're going to have a whole lot of leads where they can really utilize the running game. So McCaffrey is going to have to be heavily involved in the passing game, which we've seen before. No big deal. But with Saquon Barkley, now with Jason Garrett as his offensive coordinator, we know that Garrett loves to feed the running backs. And Saquon Barkley may be the best pure running back in the NFL as of right now. The touches are going to be there. The volume is going to be there. We expect Daniel Jones to take a small step forward this year, and there's weapons on the outside, right? A lot of people love Darius Slayton. You got Sterling Shepard, Golden Tate, Evan Ingram, if he can ever stay healthy, are only going to open up this run game for Saquon Barkley. Right now, I got him at number two, but will not be surprised if he inches his way all the way up to number one. Now, Zeke Elliott, he may be the safest option at this point, right? I mean, he's already had the Rona. We know that he's going to go out there and touch the ball right around 300 times. We've seen him heavily involved in the passing game in the past, so we know he's capable of that. A solid offensive line in a division where he's going to get the opportunity to run quite a bit. Zeke Elliott may be the safest of the top options right now. Got him at number three. Number four, Alvin Kamara. And a lot of people really don't know how to handle Kamara, right? Because they're upset what happened last year. Well, Give the guy a little bit of a break. He was not 100%. All signs are pointing to him being a full go here this year. And don't forget what Alvin Kamara is. He's kind of like Christian McCaffrey, right? He has that same type of ability anyway to be heavily involved in the passing game. However, can still handle either the load on the ground. 15 to 20 carries is not out of the question for Alvin Kamara. Plus, it's not a given that Latavius Murray is just going to take away the goal line work. Still love Alvin Kamara especially in that offense in New Orleans. Got him at number four. Now, number five, this is where things get a little bit tricky, and this is not just my love 
for Nick Chubb. A lot of people still hopping off the bandwagon because they think Kareem Hunt kills all the value of Nick Chubb. He does not. I just had a video just, what, a week or so ago about why Nick Chubb is a must-have player. So if you have not checked that out yet, you absolutely need to because Nick Chubb, the volume is going to be there, the best offensive line he's ever run behind, heck, the best offense he's ever had, and now he has a run-centric coach. They're going to run the ball a lot in Cleveland, and Nick Chubb still going to go out there and get you 20 carries a week. Got him right now at running back five. Number six is going to be Josh Jacobs, Las Vegas Raiders, and a lot of people, they still don't want to believe that he takes a leap forward here this year. I got him a few spots higher than the consensus, four spots higher. They have him at 10. I have him at six. Let's not forget that last year, he was on an offense that was uh, atrocious, right? They had Darren Waller and they had they had Josh Jacobs. That was it. Now they actually have some weapons on the outside. They've drafted Henry Ruggs to really try to open up a few of these running lanes for Josh Jacobs. Now, is he going to be the back that goes out there and catches 80 balls? No, he's not. But could he go out there and get you 250 to 275 touches this year? Absolutely, he can with a better offense, more opportunities at touchdowns. We love Josh Jacobs this year, myself included. I got him at number six overall. Number seven, it's going to be Derrick Henry, Tennessee Titans. Now, he could be a few spots higher. I don't hate Derrick Henry whatsoever. The loss of Jack Conklin on the offensive line, that kind of hurts a little bit. That was a huge piece of their offensive line. However, overall, still a solid unit. And if you can say anything about Derrick Henry, it's he's going to get touches, right? He's not going to be heavily involved in the passing game either, but he's going to kill it on the ground. So let me ask you this question. If you love Derrick Henry and you don't love Josh Jacobs because he's not involved in the passing game, why do you love Derrick Henry? Because we know he's not going to be involved there either. Still love Derrick Henry. Got him just a, a spot lower than the consensus. I got him at number seven, Kenyon Drake. And I have him one spot higher than the consensus, but he is in line for a huge year. I just talked about him not that long ago where I said, hey, if you add up just the starting running backs each individual week for the Arizona Cardinals, they would have finished as like running back three last year. This is an offense that it doesn't matter who you put in the backfield, as long as they're healthy and they can move, they're going to put up fantasy points. That's going to be Kenyon Drake this year. This guy is in line for a huge year. I have him right now at running back eight. Number nine, Austin Eckler. And a lot of people are saying, nope, I want no Austin Eckler without Phillip Rivers. Phillip Rivers, all he did was check down to Austin Eckler. False. That is not the case. That's what the media and the, the mainstream people want you to think. However, go do the research for yourself. I've said this numerous times on this channel before. If you go and look at the past work of Austin Eckler, A, he is uber efficient. The guy doesn't need 20 touches a week to put up huge numbers. And B, look at some of those passing plays out of the backfield. Those are design plays to get Eckler the ball in space. You still have head coach Anthony Lynn there who's going to want to involve his running backs. Now, no, Austin Eckler is not going to be a guy to go out and get 250 carries, but his efficiency is so high, he doesn't need that amount of volume to still put up huge numbers. I love Austin Eckler, especially in PPR formats. Got him at running back nine. Number 10 is going to be Dalvin Cook, Minnesota Vikings. I have him five spots lower than the consensus. Now, if you watched this channel last year, uh, you know how much I love Dalvin Cook. And I still do. However, there's just a little bit more risk there, a little bit more unknown this year. Now that Kevin Stefanski is not there, yes, I know they're still going to run the ball a lot in Minnesota. And Dalvin Cook may have the entire offense go through him. However, we still have Adam Thielen. We've just drafted and brought in Justin Jefferson. I expect Irv Smith Jr. to take a small step forward in this offense this year. And maybe we see a little bit more passing than we have in years past just to keep Dalvin Cook fresh. He's still a running back one. He's still a highly, highly talented player with a huge ceiling. Just a little bit more risk for me here this year coming off all that work from last year. So I dropped him down a few spots. Got him right now running back 10. Number 11. This is where I have Miles Sanders of the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, if anybody can go out there and surprise a lot of people this year, give me Miles Sanders. Now, I have him right there with the consensus right at number 11. But this guy's ceiling is astronomical. I'm a little bit surprised they haven't added somebody else in this backfield. At one point, I thought that Carlos Hyde had a chance to land in Philadelphia. Then there's been rumors of LaShawn McCoy coming back, and we know Devonta Freeman's still sitting out there. There's been other options. There's been other choices out there, but as of right now, 
It's the Miles Sanders show in Philadelphia, a great offensive line. He's able to play all three downs. He's great in the passing game. Miles Sanders has a chance to, <laughs> to really explode in 2020, and he's a great value right now. I got him as my running back 11. Number 12 is going to be Joe Mixon, Cincinnati Bengals. I have him five spots lower than the consensus at number 12, where they have him at seven. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't hate Joe Mixon. Not in the slightest. I think the guy has a huge opportunity. This may be the best team he's ever had around him in Cincinnati. So if we have drafted him in the past, why wouldn't we draft him now that things are actually getting better for him? If Joe Burrow can find any resemblance of a wide receiver in this passing game, that's only going to open things up for Joe Mixon. And we know he's capable of 300 plus touches in this offense. I don't hate him one bit. I think he's a great option, and I have him as my number 12 running back. I'm just tempering expectations ever so slightly. Number 13, I have Todd Gurley, and I have him two spots higher than the consensus does, but I think a lot of people just want to continue to read into that he's got the knee arthritis, he's got the knee arthritis, he's not good anymore. Listen, go back and look at last year. The, the limitations to his usage was more play calling based because whenever he was on the field, he looked great. He has a one-year deal to go out there and prove himself going back home to Georgia where he played college football. He has a chip on his shoulder, and he has a great offense around him with Julio Jones, Hayden Hurst, Calvin Ridley to really pull those defenders out of the box. That's going to open up things a lot. For Todd Gurley, we've seen Devonta Freeman finish as a top running back before in fantasy football. Do not be surprised if Todd Gurley finishes within the top 12 again this year. However, with the slight risk, I got him at number 13. Now, as we continue down these rankings, let's just be honest with each other for just a second. I mean, there's going to be some dude in your league out there that pays no attention to these rankings, right? He's going to totally overdraft somebody and pick somebody that really doesn't deserve to be picked that high. That's okay. Take that as your golden opportunity. Don't blow it. I mean, this is a great time to mention that other things are going to come around too, fellas, and you want to make sure you're ready. That's why you need the Lawnmower 3.0. The last thing you want is for your one golden opportunity with that certain someone to be ruined because you weren't proactive enough to trim up your boys. Now, no one, and I mean no one wants to see the meat and two veg when it looks like a hairy crime scene. When that one you love is ready for love, it's the wrong time to wonder if your body hair is as unkept as a Denny's bathroom in Yuma, Arizona at midnight, also known as gross. That's why you need the Lawnmower 3.0. Put the work in so you can really put the work in if you know what I'm talking about. Head over to manscaped.com. Enter the promo code HEADLINERS, all caps at checkout. 20% off your order and free shipping. There are sponsors here for this year, so show them some love. But now, let's get back to some rankings. Number 14 is where things get a little bit dicey. It's Leonard Fournette of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now, had you asked me this about a week or so ago, I'd have been like, yeah, I'm pretty confident with Fournette that he's still going to get the volume and the involvement in the passing game. Then you had everything come out with Jay Gruden, and now what's going to happen in the future? How does that change the dynamic of the play calling in Jacksonville? We already know this is not going to be one of the best teams in the NFL, so they weren't going to be playing with very many leads. We needed his involvement in a passing game. A lot of people want to point to Chris Thompson that, oh, he's going to take all that it's really not because he can't stay healthy for 16 games. Leonard Fournette was still going to see volume. So I like Fournette and I like where he's being drafted at. This is just the part of my rankings where I start to feel a little bit uneasy about the running backs that are here to, to come. At number 15, it's Aaron Jones, right? You already knew that he was not going to be in my top 24 overall because we've talked about that before. He's going to be somebody that I'm avoiding. However, everybody has a price, right? Everybody has value. At some point, even Ronald, no, not Ronald Jones, but Aaron Jones does have value. You just don't want to reach for him and overpay based off of last year's numbers. Aaron Jones now in a backfield that still has Jamal Williams. We know they've drafted A.J. Dillon. How involved is A.J. Dillon? How much touchdown regression is there for Aaron Jones? These are a lot of question marks in that offense that makes me not want to overpay based off of last year's numbers. So right now I've got Aaron Jones at number 15. Number 16, Mark Ingram, Baltimore Ravens, and I have him seven spots higher than the consensus. Why am I so high on him? Well, he plays on the best running team in all of football with a quarterback that's going to have a lot of defensive attention paid to him, and we saw it last year with Mark Ingram. Another one of those guys who's not going to be overly involved in the passing game, but he's going to be so efficient on the ground, and the touchdown upside is going to be there every single week. J.K. Dobbins is the future of this backfield. But in 2020, 
It's still the Mark Ingram show, and last year he surprised a lot of people. Didn't surprise us. However, don't be surprised if he puts up similar numbers here in 2020. I have Mark Ingram at number 16. 17 is going to be James Conner, Pittsburgh Steelers. And if this dude could just stay healthy, we could be looking at a monster season. Now, we've all seen the videos and the pictures on social media where the dude's back looks like the Incredible Hulk. I get it. Their workout videos, their hype videos here for the offseason. Um, we need this guy to stay on the field. But more importantly, we need a healthy Ben Roethlisberger. If he is healthy and he has the weapons of a Juju Smith-Schuster, a Deontay Johnson, a James Washington. Now they've added Eric Ebron to that tight end position with Vance McDonald. That could really open things up for James Conner, who we've seen in the past be very active in the passing game. And can turn you know a small dump-off pass into a big play. He can do it all. He just needs to stay on the field. I have him two spots higher right here at 17. Number, number 18, David Johnson, Houston Texans. And do not be surprised if you see this guy put up another solid year. Are you going to go out there and expect 1,000 yards rushing and 1,000 yards receiving? If you're expecting that, maybe fantasy football isn't for you. However, if you go out there and you treat him kind of what he is, right? He's going to be a third, fourth round draft pick by the time August comes around. And if he's your running back two or three, Expect running back two or three numbers. If this guy gets anywhere near a thousand yards rushing, heck, 1200 yards total and six to eight touchdowns, you're going to be very happy with that production as your running back two or three. If you go out there and expect those huge David Johnson numbers that we've all talked about for years, you may be sorely disappointed once again. Great value this year. Expect it for what he is, and you're going to be pleasantly surprised. Number 19, Melvin Gordon. Now, Melvin Gordon's kind of on the fence for me. Really, the only reason he's inside my top 20 is because he's going to play on an offense that's really going to be able to utilize his skill set, right? We know that they have Cortland Sutton, KJ Hamler, Jerry Judy, Albert O, Noah Fant, quarterback Drew Locke under center, which a lot of people are expecting huge things from. Plus, once the winter months come, and maybe there's those bad weather games, more reliancy on the running game. Insert Melvin Gordon in an offense here that could put up some pretty solid points. If Drew Locke is any type of an efficient quarterback in this offense with all those weapons, expect the touchdown opportunities to be a plenty for one Melvin Gordon. I got him at 19. Right there, right around the consensus, I'm one spot lower. Number 20 may surprise a lot of people. Four spots higher than the consensus, I have David Montgomery of the Chicago Bears. Now, another one of those things where because where he's being drafted, your expectations should be somewhat tempered, right? Don't go out there expecting the 1,700 total yards and 10 touchdowns, David Montgomery. You're going to be disappointed. More times than not, at this point of 2020 fantasy football, if you draft David Montgomery, he's probably going to be your running back three, maybe your running back two if you ended up going heavy wide receiver early, which you shouldn't. You should go heavy running back and not have to worry about it. David Montgomery as a running back three is a guy who still has 250 plus potential in an offense that it's kind of up in the air, right? Is it Nick Foles? Is it Mitch Trubisky? Does it really matter? Who's going to suck less? Well, David Montgomery is still going to touch the ball. How efficient is he? That's the question mark, right? Because he wasn't that efficient in 2019, but at least the volume is there and he's a great value on draft day. Right now, David Montgomery got him at running back 20. 21 is going to be Devin Singletary, Buffalo Bills. I have him four spots higher than the consensus does and I'm sick of hearing people down in the comment section saying, oh, yeah, well, Zach Moss. Well, Zach Moss this. Well, Zach, Zach Moss maybe next year. Maybe. The dude has the worst injury profile that I've ever seen. And our very own Dr. Ethan Turner is like, dude, I've done injury profiles for years, and I've never seen anybody this bad. That says something to me. If I'm going to ignore what the doctors say, what do I even have doctors around for? This is still going to be Devin Singletary's backfield. Kind of similar to what we've talked about in the past, though. Is Singletary going to be the type of guy that gets 300 touches? No, he's just not. Neither is Austin Eckler. Same type of deal, right? However, look at the efficiency of Devin Singletary last year. One of the league leaders in yards per carry, yards per touch. The guy doesn't need huge volume. And now he plays on a team that has an improved defense from last year. Their entire offensive line is back. We expect, you know, Josh Allen to take a step forward. They've added Stephon Diggs to the passing game. Things are going to open up for Devin Singletary, and he does not need 20 touches a week. If this dude can get 15 touches a week, we're looking at a 2019 version of Aaron Jones. Devin Singletary could surprise a lot of people this year, and you're getting him at a great value. Got him at number 21. Number 22, the rookie Jonathan Taylor. Now, if you've watched this show for a few weeks, I've talked a lot about Jonathan Taylor, how I love his potential for the second half of the season. 
I just don't want to draft him and have to rely on him to start the season. Now, if he's your running back three, okay, I can deal with that. Because for, for the first few weeks, you can flex somebody else if need be until this guy gets the bulk of the work. But it's going to take a few weeks. But do not be surprised if Jonathan Taylor is a top 12 running back next year and he carries a lot of teams to a fantasy championship here second half of the year in 2020. Number 23, his fellow rookie Clyde Edwards-Hilaire of the Kansas City Chiefs. Now, so many people wanted to hop on this bandwagon, myself included. I was very excited on draft night when they took Clyde Edwards-Hilaire because I expect big things from this guy, and they're going to happen. But similar to Jonathan Taylor, they're not going to happen out of the box. Right there, week one, Clyde Edwards-Hilaire is not going to go out there and get 20 carries. Damian Williams is still going to be involved. They've come out and said that on numerous occasions. Damian Williams is going to be a part of this offense, especially in an offseason that's been so crazy like this. You think the rookie's going to go in there week one and get 20, 25 touches? No, probably not. He's going to be very touchdown dependent to start the season. However, once midseason comes around, be on the lookout for Clyde Edwards-Hilaire. I've said in numerous videos before, he may be one of those guys that after the first four weeks of the season, you try to buy low because he could explode second half. 24 is Le'Veon Bell, and if I'm being completely honest, I'm not too excited to own Le'Veon Bell here in 2020 fantasy football. However, like I said just a few minutes ago, everybody has value, and that includes Le'Veon Bell. It's just got to be at a little bit less risk for me. I mean, an Adam Gase offense, they just added Frank Gore. They drafted Denzel Mims. I mean, what's going to happen? Is Sam Darnold going to take a step forward? Is Adam Gase going to go full crazy on the sideline? We just have no idea, and there's too much risk. I'll take Le'Veon Bell as my running back three. However, you're going to have to you know draft him based off a of name value because other people are going to do that. He's going to show up at the top of the queue for a lot of people a lot earlier than where I'm going to have him in my rankings. I'm just going to pass on him. I'm going to let somebody else deal with that headache here this year. That's why I got Le'Veon Bell four spots lower than the consensus. Same thing for number 25, right? Chris Carson. I've already said I'm really not that interested in Chris Carson. He's going to go way before this RB25 ranking in almost every draft. But it's not the talent. It's not the situation for Chris Carson. It's the injury, right? It's a hip injury to a running back. Every single time he touches the football, with the exception of the times he falls in the end zone, maybe, he's either going to get hit on that hip or land on that hip. That is a problem to me, and I just don't want that risk. I love the talent of Chris Carson. If he was 100% healthy, and maybe we saw a little bit more of him here this offseason, if anything comes out to where you know he's, he's doing full contact drills and he looks great, before the season starts, he will climb up these rankings. However, right now, it's just too much of a risk for me. I love the talent of Chris Carson. I'm not a Chris Carson hater, and I'm not sleeping on Chris Carson. He has a hip injury, which really concerns me. And until he can prove to me that he's 100% healthy, that's why I got him dropped down eight spots from the consensus at RB25. All right, so those are my top 25 running backs here for 2020 fantasy football. But don't forget, it's July. July 21st, to be exact, and there's plenty of time for these rankings to be tweaked and changed. Now, I'm sure we'll do another rankings video between now and the start of the season. However, if you're interested in, like, up-to-the-date rankings, like, current rankings, that's what's going to be in our draft guide. We're going to be updating that thing weekly all the way up until the start of the season to make sure that everybody has the most current and up-to-date information possible. So if you're interested in that, head over to our website, thefantasyheadliners.com. It's right there on the homepage. People are absolutely loving the draft guide. Don't take my word for it. Ask a question down below in the comment section and have somebody else give you that answer. I'm not going to try to sell you on it. We like to have our work speak for itself. So if that's something you're interested in, go check that out. But until next time, hopefully you guys have a great rest of your week, a great day, and we'll talk to you later.